I'm going to present our work, uh, Flash Graph. And my name is Dajun, and uh, we are a team from Johns Hopkins. And our research focuses on uh, large-scale graph analysis using a community uh, SSD array. And to do so, we uh, build a semi-external memory graph and graph processing framework called Flash Graph. And the semi external memory model here uh, keeps uh, all the vertices in memory and uh, all the edge lists on uh, disks. In our case, we keep all the edge lists on SSDs. And this model gives us uh, in memory performance for graphs that cannot really fit in memory. And uh, by, uh, therefore, we, uh, the flash graph achieves uh, performance comparable to in memory graph engine while they store the edge list on. SSDs, and it also, it, it, uh, Flash Graph can scale to graphs with uh, billions of vertices and hundreds of billions of edges in a single machine. So um, today, uh, graph analysis is uh, ubiquitous. So uh, we can use a graph to model the objects and their relationships in, um, in our world. And so uh, many real world problems can be uh, uh, modeled as a graph analysis problem. So, uh, and, and graph analysis is commonly used by industry uh, in machine learning and data mining, and uh, it is also commonly used by uh, scientific research. So, but graph analysis can be uh, very challenging, and the first reason is that many of those uh, real-world graphs are massive. For example, uh, Facebook's social network graph has uh, billions of vertices and hundreds of billions of edges. And, um, and the web, our web page graph is even much larger. It has tens of billions of vertices and trillions of edges. Um, and the second problem with uh, graph analysis is that many of these real world graphs has a seemingly random vertex, uh, vertex connection. Uh, so when we process this kind of graph, we, uh, it, we have to generate a lot of small random memory access. So uh, it is very hard to explore data localities in graph analysis. So uh, if we want to perform very, very efficient graph analysis, people usually use RAN to do the, uh, to, to do the an analysis. And the third problem with graph analysis is that um, many of these real-world graphs has a power law distribution. It means that a majority of the vertices in a graph has, uh, can connect to a small number of vertices, other vertices, and, major, and only a small number of vertices connect to many, many other vertices. So, if we, uh, so when we uh, perform, uh, analyze such uh, power law graph, we need to pay extra attention on uh, load balancing. And there are uh, quite a few ways uh, to scale uh, graph analysis. The first option for us is, of course, we can buy a machine with a lot of RAM. And this option is, of course, very, very expensive. And there's also the scalability problem because um, there's only a limited amount of RAM we can, uh, we can install in a single machine. And the second option is to uh, scale out in a, in a cluster. And this is a very, very popular uh, option, and it is commonly used by many uh, graph engines. They, uh, they build, uh, they process a graph in a, uh, in a cluster. And as I said before, um, real-world graphs has uh, this seemingly random vertex connection. It mean, uh, so when we partition a graph across the network, all the uh, communication between vertices need to, be, um, need to go through the network. So usually when uh, those distributed, uh, distributed in this, in this uh, distributed uh, graph engines, uh, network is the bottleneck. The third option is uh, uh, some people have tried to scale uh, graph analysis uh, with hard drives. So hard drive is, uh, is a, has a very large capacity and it can uh, keep all the, all, the, uh, all the large graphs, but uh, hard drives also have, uh, uh, the, their running I.O. performance is not that good. So uh, it turns out all those uh, graph, uh, external memory graph engines has to stream the entire data set from the hard drives every time, in each iteration, so these uh, systems have to uh, read a lot of unnecessary, unnecessary data for, um, from the disks each time, each, in each iteration, so they are very, very slow. So um, another option is, of course, we can uh, scale with SSDs, 
the ad advantage of with SSDs is that they have a very good random I/O performance compared with hard drives. So, for example, the throughput of today's uh, state-of-art flash memory is over one million random I/O per second, and also SSDs has a much lower I/O latency. So it's uh, like 20 microseconds. It, it, this is much shorter than uh, than hard drives. And compared with the RAM, SSDs, is also, uh, SSDs are also much cheaper and also much larger. So if we replace uh, hard drives with uh, SSDs uh, in graph analysis, we can certainly see a performance boost, a lot of significant performance boost. But, but if we replace a RAM with the SSDs, then we can, probably, we can also be certain that we will see performance degradation. Now the question is, by using SSDs in graph analysis, um, how much can we approach to the performance of in-memory uh, graph analysis? And also the second question is, how do we maximize the benefits SSDs bring to graph analysis? And when we build our system for a graph analysis, we, um, uh, we, we identified a few uh, challenges in using SSDs. And here is uh, some of the challenges. So first, um, our operating systems is not really designed, was not, was not really designed for fa uh, accessing fast our devices. And there's a lot of operating system overhead in, uh, in, the, um, in the kernel. And when we uh, try to access a lot of data in a large SSD array, we actually experience a very heavy overhead in the Linux uh, block subsystem. And we have tackled this problem with uh, uh, SAFS, a user space file system uh, optimized for a large SSD array. And by using SS SAFS, we uh, actually achieved uh, over 1 million I/O per second from a large SSD array. The second challenge is, um, even though SSDs are fast, and they still have a high latency uh, and also low throughput compared with RAM, after all, we are, we are trying to compete with in-memory graph analysis. So this, um, this, 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 uh, this advantage is, uh, is not very good for us. So uh, when we uh, need to design our framework, we need to heavily optimize for I.O. Uh, op uh, operations. And we have these three design principles for I.O. optimization. And the first is we want to reduce the I.O. as much as possible. Uh, by re reducing I.O., we mean uh, we want to reduce the number of I.O. Uh, IO requests issued to SSDs, as well as the number of bytes read or, r read or write from SSDs. And we also need to overlap I.O. and computation because uh, the SSDs, uh, the latency of an SSD is too, is too high. And we also need to uh, perform a sequential I.O. as much as possible, because even though those SSDs have very, very re good random I.O. performance, they still are not as, um, their sequential I.O. is still much better. So here is our architecture to tackle uh, all those challenges. And we, this architecture has three layers for uh, graph analysis using a large, a large SSD array. And in the first layer, we have SDFS. This is, a, as, as I said before, this is a user space file system that optimized for maximum, uh, that is try to deliver maximum I.O. performance. And the second layer is a fresh graph. Fresh graph is highly integrated with uh, SAFS to access data from SSDs, and ex it, it, they, it exposes a programming interface for users to write graph algorithms. So the main task, main job of fresh graph is to schedule the vertex programs written by the users and uh, try to optimize the uh, I/O operations issued, I/O access issued by those uh, vertex programs. And on top of it, users can then can implement their graph algorithms. And when the graph algorithms are executed by fresh graph, part of the computation will be pushed to the page cache because we, we want to overlap I.O. and the computation. And also, we want to reduce the uh, memory overhead when accessing the data from page cache. So to scale, out, uh, to scale graph analysis, fresh graph use uh, same external memory. And that, that means we store uh, vertex state in memory and the edge list of vertices on SSDs. And the reason we choose use, uh, we use the same external memory is we assume that uh, there are many edges than vertices in a graph. And this is actually true for almost all real-world graphs. 
And so by using a same external memory, we can scale in proportion to the ratio of edge to vertices in a graph. That, uh, that means that we can, for m m most of the cases, we can scale uh, to uh, 10 times larger than uh, larger. Um, and uh, the advantage of uh, same external memory compared with uh, uh, distributed memory is that um, same external memory enables in-memory vertex communication while scaling to a very, very large graph. And on the other, uh, in, in contrast, distributed memory model has to partition a graph, so a lot of vertex communication has to go through the network. And uh, when we compare uh, semi external memory with external mem uh, com pure external memory, and the advantage of semi external memory is, is, reduced, uh, is, is able to reduce the number of writes and avoid uh, writes to SSDs completely. So even with the same external memory model, we still need to um, heavily optimize I.O. Uh, um, and FreshGraph deploys two main uh, I.O. optimizations. First, FreshGraph uh, tries to access the edge list only required by the application to reduce I.O. And, and, and FreshGraph also uh, conservatively merge I.O. requests to increase the sequential I.O. We, uh, we, use, uh, we, we, have, we use two emerging criteria to, uh, uh, to merge our requests. So uh, FreshGraph will merge the request to edge list if these two edge lists are on the same SSD page or, this, uh, or the uh, edge lists are on adjacent SSD pages. So one thing I have to mention is that the, this merging criteria guarantees that uh, fresh we will not uh, increase the amount of data read from SSDs while uh, increasing sequential I/O access. And it turns out that this gives us the best um, uh, best performance when we compare with other uh, more uh, uh, more aggressively uh, I/O merging, uh, potentially because uh, the performance gap between uh, the 4K uh, random I.O. and the sequential, uh, uh, sequential I.O. of today's SSDs uh, is, is small. So uh, that means that reducing the number of bytes read from SSDs is more important uh, than merging more I.O. requests. So here is a, a one example of merging I.O. requests in fresh graph. And we demonstrate this uh, optimization in the most common case, that is a vertex only access um, its own edge list. So uh, in, this, uh, in, uh, in this graph, we, we see that vertices are stored in memory and edge lists are stored on SSDs. And we have the fresh graph in the middle. And those orange vertices mean, uh, means they are active. It means that uh, those uh, um, those vertices will be executed when the, uh, when the fresh graph starts to uh, run the computation. So um, then let's uh, start. The fresh graph will first pick some active vertices um, uh, from, the, uh, from those active vertices list, and then a, a fresh graph will execute them, and those vertices will start to issue some uh, requests to access their own edge lists. And FreshGraph observed the I/O request, uh, observed these requests, and tried to uh, merge them accordingly. In this case, uh, FreshGraph will merge uh, the requests for V1 and V2 uh, because they, the the edge list of these uh, two edge list, uh, two, two vertices are stored on the same SSD page. And FreshGraph will also merge uh, requests for V6 and V8 because these uh, two edge lists are stored on adjacent SSD pages. And then FreshGraph will issue only two I/O requests to the underlying file system. And then when the data is delivered to uh, FreshGraph, then FreshGraph will try to drop uh, the edge list of V7 because uh, this uh, uh, edge list is never requested by any vertices. So, and then FreshGraph will, will deliver the remaining uh, edge list to SSD, uh, to the right uh, vertices. Um, the, uh, one thing I have to mention is the number of merge highly depend on uh, how active vertices are executed. And in this case, because we, uh, our vertex only access its own edge list, 
So if the vertex scheduler executes the active vertices in the order of the vertex ID, uh, it is guaranteed that the number of merges can be maximized. So, uh, I, okay, uh, now after I showing you some of our, our optimizations in Fresh Graph, now I can switch gear and then show some performance results. And, and different graph applications have uh, very different IO access patterns. And the Fresh Graph tries to, uh, actually tries to optimize um, uh, various uh, IO access patterns and also try to access, uh, and Fresh Graph tries to optimize different IO access patterns differently. And uh, to, evaluate, to better evaluate the performance of Fresh Graph, we selected uh, some uh, the applications with different IO access patterns. And first, we categorize those uh, graph applications into three classes. Um, so in the first class, only a subset of vertices access their own edge lists. In this, uh, in this, in, in this class, um, the uh, graph, applications, uh, graph applications generate a lot of random IO access. And in this class, we pick the um, uh, breadth of search and the between the centrality. In the second class, all vertices access their own edge list. In this case, uh, because of the I.O. merging in Fresh Graph, um, those applications generally, uh, generally uh, only generate very sequential I.O. access. And in this class, we have a page rank and a weekly kinetic component. In the third class, a Vertex access multiple edge lists. In this case, uh, actually, um, those applications will generate a lot of uh, small random I.O. access. And the, uh, actually, the third class has, uh, is, is much more I.O. intensive than the first two classes. And in this class, we have uh, triangle counting and uh, scan statistics. So here is the performance of a fresh graph. And we, we compare flash graph uh, with other in-memory graph engines. And, um, to better understand the performance of Fresh Graph, we also implement an in-memory version of Fresh Graph that is simply replaced SSDs with, uh, uh, with, uh, with, with RAM to store the edge list. So all the, the in-memory version will access everything in, uh, from, from, from RAM. And we also compare with other uh, in-memory graph engines. Uh, so for, for one is the Gerua, which is the uh, fastest uh, in-memory graph engine we know. And the other one is uh, uh, Power Graph, which is a very, very popular in distributed in-memory graph engine. And from, uh, um, because different uh, graph applications have very different IO, uh, very different uh, performance, and also different uh, graph engines have different performance, so we have to plot this uh, uh, performance chart uh, in log scale. And, uh, the, and here, the y-axis is the uh, runtime, so smaller is better. And from this uh, performance chart, we can see that Fresh Graph has the performance comparable to Gerua. And the ex uh, external memory, the same external memory, graph, uh, Fresh Graph, has performance compar uh, comparable to in-memory Fresh Graph. And in some cases, the performance can reach 80% uh, uh, of the in-memory uh, uh, in-memory flash graph. And to many people's surprise, uh, the same external memory flash graph actually can significantly outperform uh, power graph, even though power graph run completely in memory, in shared memory. And here is the scalability of uh, flash graph. And to demonstrate that its uh, scalability, we use uh, uh, a web page graph. This is the largest uh, uh, largest graph publicly available. It has 3.0 billion uh, vertices and 129 billion edges. And we run all the, our graph applications on this uh, page graph. And all, the, all these graph uh, applications can finish within a reasonable amount of time and uh, consume a, small, a relatively small amount of memory. And one thing I have to point out is because of this uh, small memory footprint, actually we can scale to a much larger graph. We just don't have a larger graph. And unfortunately, we cannot uh, run other in-memory graph engines on this page graph because uh, our machine does not have, have enough run, uh, it does not have enough RAM to run um, 
other in-memory graph engines. So we read, uh, look, uh, look through the literature and try to find out some uh, previous results that uh, demonstrate the performance of other graph engines uh, on a billion node graphs. So uh, here are two, uh, two examples. So Google, for example, uh, the first one is Google Prego, which use, uh, which, which use the 300 multi-core machines for a single uh, source shortest path on, uh, and on, uh, on a graph with uh, 1 billion vertices and uh, 120, uh, 127 billion edges. And the Prego took 10 minutes to, uh, to complete. And Microsoft Trinity, the other example is Microsoft Trinity. Uh, Trinity used uh, 14 12 core machines for BFS on a much smaller graph with only uh, 1 billion vertices and 13 billion edges. And it took Trinity uh, more than 10 minutes to complete uh, BFS. And in contrast, Fresh Graph only used one machine with 32 CPU cores, and it ran BFS on a much larger graph and finished the computation in, le in actually less than five minutes, so much shorter time. So uh, although this uh, comparison is not a, a very direct performance comparison, but, uh, but I think it shows that Fresh Graph, very, uh, Fresh graph has a very promising uh, technique for large-scale graph analysis. So in conclusion, we demonstrate that SSD-based uh, graph analysis has performance comparable to in-memory counterparts, and we also show that uh, Fresh Graph offers unprecedented opportunities to perform massive graph analysis efficiently with the community hardware. And uh, here, uh, thank you, and from here I can take questions. Very interesting results. So quick question is, uh, you mentioned that uh, you had to change file system to get uh, most out of the SSD. So I'm assuming you were using SATA SSDs? Uh, yes. So if you kind of transition to NVMe SSDs, uh, you, you can get full wire rate performance. Um, maybe one or two SSDs could give you more than one million IOPS. So. Uh, OK. So would, do you think kind of transferring to NVMe SSDs, then it doesn't need to have any file system changes, or um, unless you're compute bound. So can you say that SSD again? What is that? N NVMe, NVMe mm -hmm. Express. So with one SSD or two SSDs, you can get one million IOPS. Okay, I mean, actually, Fresh Graph is the design for any uh, fast, uh, fre uh, fast fresh memory. So it's fine if you, have, uh, you can provide us a, a faster, fresh memory. It's just maybe it's more expensive, I think. OK. Thanks. The, uh, the OSF has kind of So that's what I was asking. If you're compute bound, then I don't know how much uh, core power the NVMe SSD takes to get the wire rate performance. So oh, yeah. there might be a trade-off there. Yeah, that might be a, yeah. I, I guess um, so. So if we just want to get, achieve the raw performance with the 4K uh, random read, we actually use a lot of uh, CPU power to uh, access data. Maybe we use the PCIe uh, SSD or flash memory. We will, can reduce that amount of CPU consumption. But uh, because we have this I.O. merging, so we actually, uh, the I.O. issued to SSDs is pretty big. It's not as small as 4K. So we don't really consume a lot of uh, CPU to access data from SSDs. Hi, Brad Moore, HP Labs. Um, so I like this work. It's pretty good, well, well constructed, good evaluation. Um, I had one question. I just was reading the paper, and it uh, about your experimental evaluation. It, you, you had a four socket machine, and in the in the paper you had three LSI adapters attached to one SSD array, or yes. three different SSD arrays. Uh, it's, you can view them as a single SSD array. So how how do you wire three? Uh, uh, so basically, we have uh, uh, we have first we have the uh, three LSA cards, and then it, the, the, those three S, uh, LSA cards will connect to a single J board, and we just plug in all the SSD to the single J board. I see. And then um, the other observation I was going to make is um, there are machines that can obviously 
right? Plenty of, plenty of hardware out there in the world that can hold a 1.1 terabyte graph, a single machine, right, in DRAM. HP sells a box that's got 12 terabytes of DRAM. 12, 12 terabytes? Yeah. Okay, so last time I checked online uh, in, um, what is the uh, Dell machine, and uh, we found that the seven terabytes, a single machine, costs like half a million? Is that yeah, true? Yeah, it's, it's an expensive machine, right? It's a <laughs> so six, I mean, that's really six, 16 sockets, 240 cores, 12 terabytes of DRAM. It's that's, a supercomputer in a box, basically. Right, right. But, if, but for the kind of graphs where, you, you know, where the network is the bottleneck and you're trying to do operations where the latency between the vertices is the, is the dominating factor, it seems like scale up is the right answer, right? So. so then I guess this is uh, just a price game. I was selling you a, a cheaper pro a solution with similar performance. Yeah. Anyway, good job. Yeah, thanks. So uh, we'll take uh, just one more question. So uh, you mentioned that you're optimizing I.O. by merging them uh, adjacent SSD pages. Are you aware of the physical placement of the SSD page? Is the SAFS aware of the actual placement of data on the SSD? Uh, sorry, can I, can I repeat the question? How are you optimizing IOs that are on adjacent SSD pages? Are you aware of the actual physical placement of the data on the SSD drive? Uh, am I aware of the physical data So you, you, when you have IOs that are going to adjacent SSD pages, how do you know that they are physically adjacent on the actual drive? Oh, okay. So yeah, I mean, we, we definitely know the mapping. Oh, okay. So, okay. so yeah, it's very easy to know whether or not we should merge. 